Today I will talk about an interviewing technique that is not so popular at the moment, I would say, but my guess is that it will eventually gain popularity. And this interviewing technique is called cognitive interviewing. So what is cognitive interviewing? Essentially, it's a method uh, of interviewing that derives from uh, police methods, so police interrogation methods. So uh, that's how uh, the police are questioning uh, the witnesses. Not, I don't think it's about questioning the suspects, but it's definitely about questioning the witnesses. So the way they ask questions. And uh, it has nothing to do with the good cop or bad cop technique, or it has nothing to do with beating the crap out of the suspect. Uh, no, it's not what cognitive interviewing is about. But what cognitive interviewing is about is asking questions in such a way, so it's based on uh, our knowledge of how the brain works, how the brain retrieves memory. And uh, cognitive interviewing utilizes that knowledge and helps uh, the person asking the questions ask these questions in such a way that will help uh, the person, uh, the witness or our interviewee uh, retrieve and reconstruct certain events from their memory. So you may know for example that the police sometimes ask uh, the witness to reconstruct, to go through the events of a given night or whenever uh, the event happened and uh, go for example in a in an order in an order that's uh, not a chronological order. So firstly, reconstruct the events in a chronological order, and then, for example, go back and try to reconstruct these events uh, from the end, fr uh, from the last thing that happened, going to the beginning. So, uh, importantly, because you may think that uh, all these police techniques are just uh, just aimed to detect lies, so, uh, so they are based on the assumption that uh, somebody may be lying and uh, so for example uh, retelling the story a couple of times serves uh, the purpose of trying to detect that lie, so seeing if the person is consistent with uh, his or her story, which uh, to some extent I'm sure is true, but also another reason they do it is uh, specifically, as I said before, uh, to try to help that person reconstruct the events with as much detail as possible. And another thing they uh, like to do is to ask the witness to try to remember uh, the whole context, the whole setting of that given day or night. So they, uh, they will ask uh, him or her to think about the sounds and uh, emotions, I guess because we remember through emotions and that's, that's a fact that's been uh, proven by research. So they ask uh, about emotions that this person experienced, uh, they may ask about uh, smells and sounds and everything, so uh, seemingly uh, weird and not necessarily relevant details. But what happens is that as we think about these uh, all these details, including, as I said, emotions, sounds, smells and everything, uh, our brain uh, I guess is able to reconstruct that event or that night or that day uh, more precisely because as I said we kind of remember things with emotion uh, with emotions so not just uh, what we saw or what happened but uh, what we felt what we experienced in terms of emotions which makes sense when you think about uh, things that you remember from your childhood for example quite often you do remember things like smells or uh, sounds or even uh, the emotions that I mentioned. So sometimes you may not, you may be surprised that you remember a certain event and you don't really know why, but it's usually it st uh, stands out in your memory because it was for uh, whatever reason special. So you were scared or you were extremely happy or extremely sad. So that's how it works. And asking about these all these details, I guess, helps to reconstruct that emotion as well. And this is the main method, in fact, uh, applied in cognitive interviewing. 
to ask about all these little details. And I know it may sound a little bit weird and you definitely cannot imagine, uh, depending on your research of course, but you cannot imagine uh, serious people uh, or if you're investigating managers or uh, you know some stakeholders uh, it's probably difficult for you to imagine asking them to remember smells uh, or sounds that uh, that they experienced on a given day uh, but uh, I can tell you right now that I use this uh, this method in my PhD study of migrants so as I said it's not a very popular method and I attended a lecture in which uh, a guy talked about this method uh, then I checked his uh, publications. There are not many, but I was able to find some academic articles about this method. I'll put uh, these uh, links in the description. And uh, then I decided to experiment with this method for my study. And this was uh, precisely because this was after the pilot interview. And in the pilot interview, I realized that uh, they don't necessarily, my participants don't necessarily remember the things that I'm asking them. Uh, about because uh, these things sometimes these events had happened uh, 10 years before before the interview because I was talking about their migration experiences some of them uh, have been in the country for 10 or more years so so they couldn't really remember when I asked them about uh, things they remember and I importantly I didn't uh, of course I wasn't interested in, in what they uh, smelled on the day they arrived to Scotland for example what they could smell or hear but I was interested in their experiences in general so initially I asked them about their experience of coming to Scotland and uh, many of them could not remember anything particular they just they couldn't really remember that day so then uh, in the meantime I learned about this cognitive interviewing technique and then when I came back for my uh, main study interviews I employed this method so what I did in my interviews uh, was that I asked them, I did not ask them to uh, separate questions asking them about the smells or, or the sounds they heard but I just explained to them that I would like them to uh, recollect uh, the, the events of that day so when they first arrived to Scotland and I would like them to tell me as many details as possible so thinking about the weather, uh, thinking about the, the sounds if there were any uh, sounds they could remember and one participant uh, indeed remembered some sounds so uh, re remembered music and explained what where it came from and what it was uh, so so yeah that's what I did I asked them to remember all the events and just think about everything everything that uh, surrounded them and what happened of course initially uh, they were laughing about it and so, so was I so we're both laughing about uh, this approach uh, but then what actually happened and what they told me is that it did help them remember uh, the whole uh, day, uh, the whole day with much more detail because uh, what happened as I asked them about these details as they were thinking about these details they actually remembered more and more events so one participant for example remembered uh, the smell of uh, McDonald's because that's uh, there is McDonald's uh, close to the train station uh, where uh, he arrived and he remembered the smell uh, when st he started thinking about the smells which again I know it sounds uh, quite unusual but as he started thinking about the smells and he remembered that it was the smell of McDonald's he remembered that he went to McDonald's and then this helped, the, uh, helped him remember what happened there in McDonald's which was actually important for me because it was about uh, hearing the local Scottish accent and experiencing uh, certain problems with understanding so because I asked the, uh, him about these details and about these smells he eventually uh, remembered more and more events and initially he did not remember going to McDonald's at all so although of course it may sound funny to uh, ask this kind of questions during an interview or to ask your participants to uh, reconstruct the event uh, backwards which is, by the way, uh, something I did not do, but it's up to you whether you want to also employ this method. It may sound funny, but uh, like I said, I've given it a try and I actually saw all the advantages of that method and it really helped me and my participants. So I do encourage you to uh, explore this method a bit further, uh, look at the references that I'll put in the description 
and uh, I do believe it's an extremely useful method but then again of course it will depend on your study so if you're just asking uh, let's say employees in a given uh, company about their uh, direct experiences or recent experiences or their overall uh, opinion about uh, how their company uh, works it may not uh, make that much sense to ask these kind of questions but if you are conducting a detailed study of experiences and especially something that happened in the in the past or in the more distant uh, past I think it's an extremely useful method because it helps to dig out all these memories and to uh, to reconstruct the whole context and the whole uh, days, uh, day or the event that took place. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you got value from it. Uh, if you haven't heard about this method before, uh, as I said, I encourage you to explore uh, some literature on it. And also, on the other hand, I think that now there may be more literature about it than uh, there was when I was initially looking for it. So if you enjoyed uh, this content please like the video and if you're new to this channel consider subscribing. Uh, this channel is about helping you develop and conduct research that will make an impact and the content that I post is about uh, data analysis and research design.